Hi guys, and welcome to our uh, team mashup team call. It is Wednesday. Oh my goodness, what are we? January twenty fourth. I just said it three times, so I can remember, and I almost forgot. Um, we have a wonderful guest tonight. Um, her name is Kate, and she's going to be talking to us about social media and running our businesses online. Right? Yes. Right. Okay. Yes. So um, I'm going to welcome her, let her take over, and we will begin. Go ahead. The floor is all yours. Thank you. Well, I appreciate you having me, Jody, and I appreciate you introducing me to the team, Rebecca. Um, I have been doing social media as a business. I am a coach and consultant, uh, and I've been doing this for about eight years. Um, so I started off in, in magazines and communications and um, transitioned into nonprofit and, you know, they said, can you figure out this Facebook page? And the rest is kind of history. And, you know, as LinkedIn got bigger for nonprofits and businesses, I figured that out. And then Twitter and Pinterest and Instagram. So I'm really self-taught, uh, but I have a big, big passion for women entrepreneurs in the health and wellness space. Uh, and I have a lot of friends in multi-level marketing and I've had some experience in that industry as well. Um, so I always think it's fun to chat with people in that industry and just sort of share what, what I know and what I've learned over the past several years of doing this. Um, and I always think it's way more fun to be interactive. I don't like listening to myself talk for, you know, 20, 30 minutes. And I don't think anybody else does either. So if you have questions, if something isn't clear or you, you know, it sparks something in your brain, definitely interrupt me. And I would rather just have kind of a Q and A style. Uh, but you know, having seen the evolution of Facebook and Instagram, which is, I think, if I'm understanding correctly, uh, where most of you are spending most of your time on social media and, and promoting your businesses on Facebook and Instagram, um, you know, there are definitely some best practices that I've, I've picked up, especially when it comes to multi-level marketing. And the first one is really to remember variety. And I feel like Rebecca, you do a great job. I was just on Instagram for a few minutes and a few of your posts hey. popped up. And I love what you're doing in terms of not just posting food pictures or not just posting workout pictures. People really respond to variety. Um, and you know, one of my first and foremost rules is to always remember who you're trying to reach. Mm -hmm. So it might seem like it's all about you and you need to tell your story and your experience in order for people to relate to you. And that is true on one level, but on another level, it's really important to take a step back on a regular basis and think about who you're trying to reach and what they're looking for when they're logging into Facebook or Instagram. They're not looking to be sold to and they're not looking to be pressured, they're looking to be social. It's called social media for a reason, and I feel like I say that so much, but it really is true, and people forget when they're in any kind of sales position, it's easy to forget that the people are not going onto social media to be sold to. Um, so just always keeping your ideal client top of mind is a huge advantage over a lot of people who just don't, who just kind of think it's a platform to talk about themselves. Um, and giving that ideal client variety is a really, really good approach because then people won't get bored. We're all kind of ADD and we get turned off by seeing the same types of things from the same people over and over again. So I love what you do with, with that on, on Instagram, Rebecca. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, so I think that's a really good one. I think it's also important to know kind of who is on what platform. Uh, according to Sprout Social, there's a lot of really good free information out there. Um, well, let's say there's a lot of free information out there. It's not all good. <laughs> but Sprout Social is a really good website for um, webinars on social media, um, demographics, latest statistics and analytics. So you can check out Sprout Social, but the last time I was on there, I heard that the average American spends 35 minutes a day on Facebook. <laughs> yeah, and that's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> and the average American checks it eight times a day. <laughs> so there are definitely people who check it way more. Yeah. Um, and there are check people who check it less. So it's an interesting. Um, I've also, I get a lot of questions from my clients about how often am I supposed to post? And the latest research I've seen shows that posting to Facebook and to Instagram one to two times a day 
gets the most engagement. So that's always a goal too, is getting engagement on your posts. It's not really good enough, unfortunately, to post really good content. You need to have posts that people are engaging with. So liking, commenting, sharing. Um, so posting one to two times a day. And that feels like a lot to a lot of people. And I totally get that. Um, so if that feels like a lot to you, it can be a good idea to try to set aside, like if you time block or you have any kind of calendar or schedule planner, time block like an hour on Monday for marketing Monday. It just kind of sticks in your brain. Um, and if you can start out the week and schedule a few posts out or just plan out what you're going to post and when that can be really helpful and then do it again, like Thursday, Friday, and you're already ahead of the game. Um, a lot of people ask me if they need a business page. A lot of people feel like in multi-level marketing, they can just use, you know, their personal Facebook profile and they don't need a business page. And Facebook has made it really clear over the past few years that if you're using a personal profile to promote your business too much, they'll shut you down. Right. They really want you to be operating on a business page. And there are a lot of advantages to using a Facebook business page over a profile, a personal profile. So when you're on a personal profile, you can't see how many people saw your post. You can see how many people liked it, commented on it, shared it, but you can't see the total number, which is always much higher. Right. So just for that reason alone, it's a really good idea to have a business page because yeah. then you'll have all sorts of analytics and it'll say, you know, maybe three people engaged with this post. So one person might've clicked on it, two people might've liked it, but 150 saw it, it reached 150 people. So then you can start thinking, why did only three people engage with it when 150 people saw it? What can I tweak to try to get that ratio up next time? Right. Do you have ideas for that? Because I know both Jody and I do have uh, business pages. Good. Um, and I think some of the other people do too. Um, but to how to get more followers or engagement with those posts. Yeah. So you always um, have the option to invite your personal friends to like mm -hmm. your business page. Um, there's these the three little dots yeah. underneath your cover yeah. image. So if you have already invited friends, you can also share posts occasionally from your business page to your personal page, just as sort of a friendly reminder, you know, please mm -hmm. like my business page. If you'd like to learn more about what I do, I'd love, you know, another like. You can pay to advertise your page or pay to promote your page for five bucks a day. People think of Facebook advertising and, you know, we all sort of don't want to spend money on Facebook just as a rule, but Facebook advertising can be really cheap and it can be really effective because you can target who you want to reach. Yeah, we, so that's, I, Re I, Rebecca, I think you said that you've done it. I've done it where I've boosted various posts, yeah. um, things like that. but. I, I think one of our biggest issues is um, like, for example, I did a post today um, that was, you know, in my opinion, like a pretty big post. It was also an invitational post, that kind of thing to an upcoming group that, I, that we're running, that sort of thing. And I always struggle. Do I post it on my business page? Or do I post it on my personal? Because my business page, I, I, you know, I don't, I did the invite every, all of my friends to my like page. I've done that, but I don't get a lot of traction. I've done it where I've either tagged myself in the, my personal page in the picture, or I've also shared it on my personal page. But I always wonder and I struggle, and I'm sure people that will be watching this on the replay have the same thing of, is it better to share it? Is it better to tag? Is it better to just not post it on your business, you're, like which way is it better to go? Yeah, I've heard that it's better to do it on both separately. Okay. So try that next time and see what kind of traction you get. Um, so maybe like tomorrow, even though yeah, I exactly. last night, tomorrow, yep. post the same exact content on the other yeah. Thing. Yeah, okay. and see how that goes. Unfortunately, a lot of social media can be trial and error. Right. So, it, and people's audiences are different. 
so it's hard to say like these are the rules we can say like these are the best practices and this is right what, you know some research supports but at the end of the day it's kind of what your audience is going to respond to and just playing around with different things to see if you can get better um, engagement so that's what i would recommend so you um, think posting it separately um both is better than like sharing it to your personal page after i think so Okay. I mean, that's what I would recommend, but then you can try sharing it and see. Sometimes Facebook likes to um, prioritize original content. So if they feel like you're just kind of sharing lots of other people's posts constantly, they might not show those posts of yours to a ton mm -hmm. of other people. They want to see that you have original ideas to contribute to the Facebook community. Um, right. Having said that, they did just change their algorithm um, so that they're really prioritizing business pages that are engaging, that are not just posting content. Um, so they want business pages to be interacting with other business pages and liking and commenting and sharing as their business page. So again, it so kind like of for goes example, back to then, the variety like idea. Right. So like if Rebecca posts something as discover your stride, me as fit and task master mama, I should, instead of Jody, I should do it as fit task master mama because it's business to business. Yes, exactly. Okay. And okay. sometimes Facebook will allow a business to tag a personal profile and sometimes they won't. It's usually, um, you know, if you're posting as your business page, you might be able to still tag Rebecca's personal profile if you wanted to, because right. she's probably engaged with your business page Correct. as her personal profile. Yep. But sometimes they kind of like want to separate church and state and make sure you're only tagging other businesses. So it's I've, just yeah, I've noticed that as well. Yeah. Whereas Rebecca and I, we interacted both business and personal. So she's kind of on my business. So like if there's a, if I post a picture, for example, of her and I, I can tag her or I can whatever with her, but yeah. like other people, like I was trying to do a post the other day and I was like, he is sinkers and it didn't work. So I was like, okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. And hashtags are another area that, you know, it kind of is trial and error. A lot of people will tell you, on Instagram, you need to post eight to 12 hashtags per post, and that will get your post in front of more people. And then I just saw something today that said, do not post more than two hashtags on Instagram. Really? So it really kind of depends on, again, your audience and what hashtags you're using. Luckily for you guys, health is huge on Instagram and people love posts about health, posts about food. Um, so if you just do, a couple, you know, a handful of hashtags, you'll get more followers and you'll get new followers um, pretty consistently. And that's a nice advantage of Instagram over Facebook. I feel like Instagram profiles grow more quickly than Facebook um, business pages, but sometimes the followers you get on Instagram are only looking for pictures and they're never going to take that relationship into real life mm -hmm. um, and become a part of your team in any way. Right. But sometimes they might, you just kind of never know. And there are people who have built their multi-level marketing businesses entirely on social media and they've taken those sales, you know, they've taken those relationships offline and they've really built those sales. So it kind of just depends, but yeah, the, in, the hashtag thing is another example. Just see what people respond to. Mm -hmm. Try a few posts where you do two or three hashtags and then try a few posts where you do eight to 12 and see what gets more engagement. Do you see, is there any difference between having the hashtags in the initial post versus in a comment? Because I'll do that sometimes. I'll do some in the first post and then I'll do more in a comment. Yeah, I've seen a lot of people having really strong opinions about that. And I have not seen... A difference either way. Um, so a lot of people, if they're sharing consistently their Instagram posts onto their Facebook page, and that's the only way you can go. A lot of people say, can I start a, can I post on Facebook and have it link over to Instagram? And the answer is no, you have to start on Instagram. Uh, but because Instagram is sort of more hashtag friendly, like people 
are used to seeing hashtags more on Instagram. Sometimes if they know they're going to share that post over to Facebook, they'll put the hashtags in a separate comment because they don't show up as often over on Facebook. If that makes sense, once they share it onto Facebook, most of those hashtags will just stay on Instagram. So that's one way to do it, but I, I just feel like don't overthink it and don't complicate your life. And if it's easy for you to put it in another comment or you're noticing that people respond better when you put the hashtags in a separate comment, that's great. Um, but I have not noticed a big difference for my clients because I pay attention and I've played around with several clients um, Instagram and tried to find a pattern and there really hasn't been a pattern, but there could be for you. A lot of people say that it gives them a, a headache to see hashtags directly following your comment or your, you know, your caption if you go right into hashtags. So that's one reason people feel like it's a little bit more visually appealing to have the hashtags in a separate comment, but I don't think it makes a huge difference. Have you played around with it both ways, Rebecca? A little bit. I'm still kind of like, it's hard to tell yeah, the, thing, the feedback I'm getting from things if they're coming from the hashtags or not, and I'm yeah. finding like you get those couple of random people that seem like they're they're following you because they just want you to follow them. Yeah, like something completely too. unrelated to what I was talking about or what I was doing, <laughs> and like I had some like motorsports something start following oh. me, and I'm like naturally. Okay. <laughs> not nice. so sure about this one but <laughs> and a lot of my clients will ask me I feel like that question comes up all the time do I have to follow people back if they followed me do I have to follow them back and the answer is no because as soon as you follow people some of their content will start showing up in your feed not all of it will I think the most recent number I saw was like you'll see five percent of a given Instagram users posts on any given week, like kind of across the board. Um, so you're not necessarily going to see everything that that strange person is posting, but they're going to show up in your list of followers. And sometimes people will check out like, Oh, who's Rebecca following? Why would she be following that guy? And you know, if you're using Instagram for business, it's, you know, it's kind of reflective of your brand and you kind of want to be as consistent as you can be. So it's just something to keep in mind. Do you find, um, is it better on Instagram to have it as a personal account or a business account? I'm glad you asked. I was just going to touch on that. If you're using it at all for business, which you guys are, it should be a business account. Um, it doesn't make a big difference visually. It's not like, you know, a person, okay. it's not like Facebook where you have to accept a friend request versus liking a page. It looks pretty similar but it makes it easier for people to get in touch with you. Um, so it, like, it allows you to have sort of a different profile set up so that you can list more clearly your phone number, your website, your contact information. Um, and it just looks a little bit more professional and it gives you all of those analytics that you don't get on a personal profile. So the same advantage of using a business page. So you can pay to promote an Instagram post um, and you can see how many people saw a given post. So okay. you can get analytics a lot more easily on an Instagram business profile. So I definitely recommend that. And the nice thing is that Facebook owns Instagram. Um, so we like to say they play really nicely together. Uh, so if you're doing an ad on Facebook, it gives you the option of also running that ad on Instagram. Um, and then you'll get, you'll get a preview of what it looks like, and then you'll get the analytics on both platforms to see, um, and be able to compare, which is really nice. Okay. Yeah. I noticed that cause I didn't know that. And then all of a sudden I'm on Instagram and I'm like, oh, huh. I and it's nice. You don't have to just, yeah. You don't have to start over. You don't yeah. have to start a new profile. It's literally in the settings and you switch a little yeah. toggle switch and now you have a business profile. It's super easy. What, what are your thoughts, because um, I've been using it a lot, is uh, of in Instagram stories? I like Instagram stories. I, 
think it's fun that it's more casual and you can, you know, write really easily on, on the images and stuff. I don't like that it goes away after 24 hours. So you I can don't, highlight it. Right. So I do like the new highlight option. Um, so I don't like my clients to spend like a ton of time and energy on stories, but it is really nice that you can now highlight a few of your stories. I don't know how many you can highlight. I think they're still. I uh, right now I have, well, highlight, I, I have a lot in my highlights. Oh, good. Yeah. Uh, right now well, that, that I makes have like it more. one, two, three, four, five folders. And in here I have one, Two, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I think I have like 20 images. That's a lot. That's great. Yeah. So, um, I because, and just to give you a little background. So since we've started this, a new fitness program, 80 day obsession, uh -huh. um, I've been sharing more so than normal, like my workouts on um, Instagram stories, my meals, um, various things that are happening while I'm doing it, like things like that. And some of it I'm keeping as um, highlights because like if somebody wants to know, okay, I'm going to start this program. I'm on plan A, for example, what the heck is Jody eating? I can yeah. look at her mama meals because they're there. Um, cool. Yeah. And so like, that's one of the reasons why I, I'm, I'm doing that aspect of it. But I do, I do get like interaction in the yeah. sense of, um, uh, depending on what I post, if I do a poll, if I ask a question, um, I have been getting a little bit of traction. But the one thing though is, um, obviously I don't necessarily want my friends um, and I want the world to see it. So I've been using my location as, for example, in all, every one of my posts, I put Connecticut. Cool. Um, and in hoping that somebody in the state of Connecticut, whether yeah. it's here in Danbury or in Greenwich or in Stanford or Hartford, New Haven, whatever, sees this and, you know, what, whatever. But, um, I mean, I've had a couple of people, you know, like it will show like someone in the U.S. liked it. Um, I think so far, I think the most I had one time was like 50 views, for example, because it gives you like the analytics of it all and all that kind of stuff. Right, right. Like this morning's one of my workout things, it had one United States story viewer. Cool. Okay. Yeah, you never know. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm trying that and I mean, it seems I'm being consistent with it every single day and it seems Good. to people seem to be interested in it. I throw like silly stuff with my children and pets and stuff, but nice kids and pets are huge on Instagram. Yeah. People love seeing that kind of thing, which is yeah. fun. So good for you for, for working that in consistency is so, so important. No matter what social media profile you're using, people for better or worse will assume that you conduct yourself in person and in business the way you conduct yourself on social media. So right. being professional and being consistent is huge. Um, and I'm glad you brought up the location setting because locate always choosing a location for your post, even if it's state of Connecticut, it doesn't have to be your home address, which a right. lot of people think. Um, those posts always get more more engagement, more eyes land on those posts. So mm -hmm. whenever you can do a location, that's really, really important. Okay. And that's for both Instagram and Facebook? Yes. But it's more important on Instagram, I think I've heard. Yeah. Okay. Cool. What other questions do you guys have? I know we only have a couple more minutes. I feel like we've covered a lot of information. I don't want anyone's eyes to place over. <laughs> um, but variety is huge. And, you know, like I said, remembering who you're trying to reach is really important because one of the things I see the most across the board when, it, even if it's not, not just in multi-level marketing, but a lot of entrepreneurs, solopreneurs just feel like they need to talk about themselves a ton on social media. And there's definitely a place for that and telling people your story and what drew you to this 
business? What drew you to this program? What's working for you? You know, client success stories, that's all huge. But really remembering who you're trying to reach and what would be helpful to them or what would be informative to them or entertaining to them, pictures of your kids and pets, like that's awesome. Um, you know, there's a, a good place for that too. So trying to switch it up as much as possible and, you know, providing really good information. So it's not just stories about you. If you can get really good statistics about health, numbers are huge and people respond to numbers. So if you can get or make really pretty infographics um, and that does really well on Instagram and if you can you know, be posting articles from really reputable sources on Facebook, a lot of people are reading articles these days. They didn't used to be spending a lot of time reading on on Facebook, but articles are getting some engagement as long as they're not like constant, if they're mixed in mm. into your um, variety. So it's just important and it establishes you as a health expert instead of someone who woke up this morning and decided to do this. Because <laughs> there are a lot of those too. And that's awesome. <laughs> but right. You guys are much more uh, reputable than that. And you want to make sure that comes across. Right. Um, I think, I mean, you, I have a ton more questions, but we'll do that offline. But I mean, <laughs> there's, I mean, this is definitely, this is definitely helpful. Um, I'm sure that if, um, anybody does have questions and I'm saying this to the people that watch the replay, come, uh, put it in the comments under the video and Rebecca or I will share it with you. Um, and then we'll go from there. But, um, no, this was very informative. Rebecca, do you have any other questions? I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> like awesome. you all that information going in, you're like, um, I think I'm, yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of information, but yeah, I hit, but I yeah Rebecca that. knows how to find me and you guys yeah. can like my Facebook page. It's just Kate Fitzpatrick consulting and I'll shoot Rebecca a message tomorrow with my contact information in case someone wants to get in touch and like a okay. tiny little bit of information about how I work with people. Okay. Well, thank you so much for taking your time. And You're welcome. Um, as I said, guys, if um, you have any questions for Kate, please put it in the comments. And um, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm You're welcome. You now. Um,